Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Shooting Show. On this week's episode we have got some action from abroad, some fox control and some rabbiting with an air rifle later on. But first we join Thomas Nissen as we head out to New Zealand for the second half of his action packed adventure. Looks like it's yeah. a good management one, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite thin. Yeah. And you have not been shooting that many robots the last couple of years <coughs> since you've been living in New Zealand, so. I've uh, probably last time I've shot a robot oh, would have been maybe 2012 or 2011 or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. 10, 12, whatever years ago. Yeah. It's a bit while, a bit, yeah. bit of a while ago. But it's, this is a nice management one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. It means I'll be able to return the favor. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in New Zealand soon. Yeah, so. yeah, we'll go, yeah. we'll go to New Zealand, yeah. and um, we'll go to New Zealand, and I reckon we, um, we're going to get get you a management stag. Oh, we'll get a nice stag, something that's um, we can just shoot twelves or above, and if we see something that's got some bad genes and stuff like that, we um, we want to try and get them um, yeah. removed off the land. So, okay. I'll tell you what. Here's an invitation for you to come down to New Zealand and hunt with Peter Jacobson. When you hunt with me, nothing will go wrong. <laughs> Got ourselves into a bit of a pickle. Quite a large pickle actually, she's completely bottomed out. We tried everything, we can't get her out, so um, we're going to change a bit of a plan. I'm going to get John Key Tomcat here, um, load up all the all the ammo and everything. He's got a big fat mule pack on his pack. <laughs> and we're going to go up and chase a couple of stags up the back of here. Um, and yeah, we've um, got another friend down at camp, so he's going to bring a quad bike over that's got four-wheel drive, and hopefully we'll be able to drag it out um, later tonight once we finish the hunt. So. Never a dull moment up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Andy boy. Let's go. Back. See the bus out, big buck. Oh, I can't see. I can't see. stack standing here 220 meters very nice 10 pointer of course I'm tempted <laughs> but he's too good we have to to see if there's much better stacks in here and what's worth stack than him this one he might be a good one next year or the year after or the year after that he stands perfect now now he's moving away we are a little bit in a bad wind so we'll find another one
exciting moments. Most eggs are coming out the out the bush. We were on the way up to call some goats. Then he suggested we stay two minutes and a young stag, very young stag came out. I'm not sure how big but not very very small one but promising very good spread on the antlers. So I think we will stay two minutes more. Down, then in a cow shit. But there's cow shit all over, man. <laughs> Stop where I'm standing. He's a nice eight. He's got quite a bit of width, um, bit of girth in the in the antlers. So I definitely would leave him. He's a young, promising stag. This one here, um, and he's got two hinds with him, which is good. So he's the kind of one uh, we definitely want to keep on the on the property. 110%. Really good genes. There are two kinds of um, animals here, or stags, reds. Um, there's the, there's the ones that's got almost like the classic Rakaia um, head, which are nice wide beams, beautiful big brown bay tines. Um, and you've got the other ones, which are like long and stumpy and didn't really have much girth. They just go straight up and they put out lots of tines. All the tines are really small. You can easily get like 12 points on a on one young stag. Um, but the body are super sized as well. It looks like it's a wapiti or something like that. Um, and they're not the best of genes. The hinds are the same. They they grow really big. So we try and get rid of that um, population to sort of allow um, better genes to um, to be on the property. Um, and I use this here just to check on everything. Yesterday we, as you saw, got stuck here. We went stalking on foot, saw some stacks. Now we are back with the cavalry, some friends, some quads. I believe, I believe, Pierre. Yes, I in, believe in the, blue big, one. <laughs> the big blue one. As Thomas Lindin isn't said. Yeah, the big the blue, blue string, I believe in the thin red line <laughs> towards Mr. Rowan. I'm more in doubt about it. Mr. Rowan. But I believe. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Mr. Do Rowan. It, do you believe, Pia? I believe in the blue! <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty! <laughs> In a few minutes, we will go out deer stalking in this truck that we just pulled out of the mud. And uh, but luckily we have it, and now we can go up in the hills where here he knows about a lot of stags. He has also seen some good fellows up there, or maybe we will take a hind. Who knows? But uh, it is named now the mud truck. It's 440 meters, it's 
too far for me to shoot, then it's also too far for us to judge as if it's shootable. Uh, it will take too long time to come close because it's not many minutes from its dark, so we will run the city and wait. Hope for a good stack to come out. It's big country here. It's not easy to get a shot at close range. So. <laughs> It's the last morning, we're going out, our last outing. Come on, let's go dogs, let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Even that it's deer management trip and we are we are on our way to stalk the deer, then we just saw a goat on the on the way, and uh, in Pierre's area we have to call all go all feral goats. So uh, Pierre he asked me to take it with a 22, 250, and of course I did. If he wants me to, I do it. But uh, I think we have to pack and get on, see if we can find a stack. Spikers on the game truck cameras. I think they're about maybe two years old, and they've got they've got um, the, the antlers goes everywhere, and it just look very nice. It's not something I want to keep. And I know one of them he's actually keeping hinds, so I'm quite keen with we'll see if we can get rid of him. Um, and also know there's big stags down here as well, so we'll go down here and have a look, see if something pops out. you get them and sometimes you don't. We did have a conversation, me and Tomcat, that the raw's probably over and done with and that makes the big stags more less less active. They're probably hunched up somewhere in a, underneath a big bush and relaxing so that's the way it is. Up next, Stuart Ebro heads out for an early morning fox or even a cold deer. Stu is out on the freshly silaged field, hopefully to get himself something interesting. Hi, I'm Stuart Ebro from Warwickshire Wild Game. We're back out again with Ollie Lees. 
Um, this time's a little bit different. We're going after foxes this evening and uh, I've changed my system from what I'm going to use for foxing and for deer stalking. So normally I run my 308 for my deer stalking and I ran a 2250 with a dedicated thermal on it for, for foxing. Now, uh, I'm always preaching to the new stalkers that I get that you should always be met, beware the man with one gun. And that's because your familiarity with it, you know bullet drops, you know, you know where the safety is, everything is just always the same. So I say it that much that so I'm gonna do it myself. So I've bought the Leopold uh, quick release mounting system for my Sauer 202. And I've got my Shirosky Z6i uh, and my Pulsar Thermion uh, with the same quick release mounts on and I should be able to zero them up now and interchange them without having to re-zero. <coughs> okay, so we have zeroed the Shirosky uh, inch high, inch and a half high, 100 yards. And then we've gone down to a, fox tar a steel fox target um, at 200 yards and we're bang on. Uh, we took the scope back off, put it back on again, repeated the process and it maintained at zero. So we're kind of winning there. We dropped the Thermion on, we zeroed at inch height 100 yards, went down to 200 yards, we're bang on. Um, took it off, repeated the process and we were we were grouping was really well, grouping was good. Um, and they were bang on every time, no matter that we took it on and off. So I'm happy with that. Um, I was a little bit anxious about it because um, I don't like taking scopes on and off, but I'm pretty sure these systems now are pretty, pretty good. So we're happy now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to a block of ground, uh, backs onto a sheep farm. It's recently been silaged, so it's opened up uh, probably about 250 acres. Um, we've been struggling to get on top of the foxes there because there's been so much cover. So now that they've, they've silaged, foraged that grass, um, we should be able to see some foxes and get some shots. Let's, uh, let's go. So we just had a bit of a, uh, a bit of a mad rush then. Let's just trim down this hedgerow, swung into the field so we can see. Yeah, we've got a big 700 acre field in front of us that's been silenced. We swung down the hedgerow, and pulled up, and just kind of in our face, caught us a little bit. Came to the back of the truck, started getting rifle. Ollie was getting his camera out and literally Ten yards behind us in the hedge, there was two foxes fighting. We could hear them going at it in the hedge. Uh, so it was a quick, a quick scramble to put the rifle together, jump on the tailgate and see if I could see over the hedge. But I think in all the rushing and cameras banging and sticks banging, they might have just uh, heard us. But I'm sure they'll not be far away. So we've got a big field in front of us. Hedgerow over to our right hand side, another decent sized field and the wood that backs onto that. Just caught a fox through the thermal coming down that woodland. And hopefully it's gonna come into our field.
just spotted one in the next field over there's like a, a gap in the hedge that the farmers used to go through um, and uh, we spotted him and he was probably well the, the gap is 300 yards away and he was probably another 100 yards back into the next field I mean we called but we've got that's the wind it's coming sort of di directly from him straight to us and we tried squeaking him but without the wind uh, with the wind the, the sound would have got there and we sort of hummed and hard for a couple of minutes whether we should uh, go after him or we didn't want to go get across the field and then him come through the gap and be exposed so uh, we, we waited and waited and then bottled it and decided we were going to go after him and literally the point where we're about to leave the truck, I just had one last quick look with a the thermal and he'd come through the gap down the hedge and he was he was sort of oh, I don't know, it's probably 150 yards um, just down this hedge row in the field and um, going into the next gateway into the next field and I'd have lost him uh, over the hedge so I had to I tried whistling him and again with the wind in our face he didn't hear it so in the end I shouted at him and he stopped just long enough uh, for me to be able to squeeze the trigger off so he looked, he looked like he was limping as well so um, I'll do him a favour so uh, just the one for tonight um, probably like to stay out a little bit longer but I'm uh, I'm up in the morning with clients stalking uh, Roebuck so we're three o'clock start well three o'clock alarm um out on the ground for four o'clock so uh quarter to 11 now so we're gonna call it quits but i'm sure the I'm sure the farm will be happy um another one gone um hopefully save some livestock so yeah good uh good evening all around i think Finally, on this week's episode, we join Mark Ripley as he heads out with his air rifle after some rabbits on a local allotment, but not before a productive session out on a local dairy farm. This evening, I've got a rather different job to what I usually get up to. Tonight, I've got to uh, pop out and have a little look at an allotment. Someone's asked me to see if I could thin out a few of the rabbits that are uh, getting in there and um, basically just eating everyone's plants and vegetables and things that they're growing there so i don't expect it's going to be massive bags of rabbits because the whole area is fenced in all around now the allotments there's several allotments in the same little field backs onto a small playing field and i think the rabbits are coming through somewhere either coming through a hole in the fence into the allotments or they may well be living under a shed or something actually in the in the area itself so it's the first time I've been down to have a look at it. I'm going to have a look tonight, take the thermal down there and just see if I can knock over the probably three or four rabbits which are in there causing the damage. So I've got with me the Brocock uh, Delta Wolf in 177, 12 foot pound. So this is an ideal tool for the job. And I've got this topped off with a Pulsar C50 day night scope. Right, before I go out and have any shots on live quarry, I'm just going to top the rifle up with a bit of air and then have a couple of practice shots just to check it's on zero at 30 metres. Right, I've just topped this up with air, but what I hadn't realised was I haven't charged the battery up on it. Now this rifle's got a very clever little computer system which does a multitude of things. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that right now, but it also controls the trigger mechanism. Now, without that, I can't shoot the rifle. Fortunately, I've brought with me a little power bank and a lead, so I've plugged that in and that's now charging and uh, I can still use the rifle with this while it's charging so what I'll do is I'll probably just take this little power bank 
to the stock and uh, just make do this evening, <laughs> ever the professional. Right, so not ideal, but that will get me out of bother. Well, it's a lovely evening this evening and the uh, allotments are bound to have a few people still milling around until it gets dark. So I think what I'll do is I'll head down to the farmyard here, just have a little mooch around, just see if there's one or two rabbits starting to come out or maybe a few late crows and magpies hanging around down there. Well, that's a pity, Dan. That's a good start. Round uh, the farmyard here, the pigeons, crows, magpies, they all hit the maize silage that's in the yard here, which is all foodstuffs for the cattle. So, um, yeah, anything hanging around the farmyard like that is fair game. So a little sneak around the farm buildings like this is usually a good opportunity to knock a few things over because the birds and that around the, around the farm, they tend to sort of be quite used to people in and out, cattle moving around and just generally people going about their sort of daily business. So uh, you can quite often wander around the building and shoot something off a roof or off a fence post out the back here. Well, the light's quickly faded and I haven't found anything else, so um, I think it's time to head down to the allotment and have a look down there. Right, uh, just before I head down to the allotment, I'm going to have a quick look in this field here by the road, because there's usually one or two rabbits in there.
Certainly uh, worth a quick walk around that field. That's four rabbits down. So certainly off to a good start. All right, let's head down to the allotment. Well, this really is a really difficult uh, little permission to shoot. There's obviously not a lot of rabbits in here because it's been fenced in. So there's probably only one or two places where they're getting in or they're coming under, coming out from under one or two sheds or something in here. But um, there's so much cover here, even with a the thermal, it makes it very difficult to, to pick out anything. Uh, there's a lot of hot objects around or a lot of things that are glowing like a rabbit would. So. It's a bit of a needle in the haystack. So I finally managed to get one. <laughs> There's certainly not a lot of rabbits in here as I well, I kind of expected that. But um it looks like it might have only been the one. <laughs> well that's just how it goes sometimes. You just you know, you never know with these sort of um these sort of permissions they come up. Sometimes they can be really good and team with rabbits, other times you just get one or two and it's not really worth bothering with, but uh Nonetheless, I'll put back up anyway another night and just have a little look around, see if I'm seeing anything else, but it's a pretty tricky one, this one. Right, let's go and get him and uh, head on to another bit of ground. I've actually got a little small hold in that uh, is not far from my house, so I think what I'll do is I'll just pop in there on the way home and have a little look. There's bound to be a few rabbits on there as well. One veggie muncher, so we'll move on to that small holding now.
Well, that was a bit annoying. I got that one and uh, it dropped over clay and I shot it. It was only about 20 metres. I just took a freehand shot and it um, hit it with a lovely headshot, dropped it straight away. What I hadn't realised, I knew it was in the hedge a little bit, but what I hadn't realised was there's a wire fence in between and uh, he's about a metre and a half back from the wire fence and uh, I've got no way of reaching in there to get it. It's just a real thick hedge, so unfortunately I have to leave that one where it is. But that's one less that's going to be uh, chomping away on the vegetables, so good. Right, well, I've had a little look around this small holding. It's literally just a couple of small fields, but there's very few rabbits in it. There's literally two or three. Um, I've been around, I managed to shoot one of them, uh, and the others just sort of scarpered off. And there's a few sheep in, in this field as well. Uh, so I don't know if that's why there's not the uh, numbers of rabbits there normally is on here. But anyway, so uh, I've got one more. So what's that? Uh, four, five, six, seven in total. I picked up six, but seven shots, so not a massive bag, but um, we are hunting with the air gun after all, so can't expect too much, but uh, I'm still I'm pleased with that. I've had to work hard for them, but all been sort of quite rewarding shots, so uh, yeah, happy with that. So I hope you've enjoyed the episode, and uh, once again, thanks for watching. Another great episode of action there and I hope you've all enjoyed it. Now remember, if you're not a member of Basque, now's the time to join. And if you haven't liked and subscribed already, please do. My name's Chris Castle and this has been The Shooting Show. If you aren't a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.